here's our low power. Okay, what do you think? I'm wondering about MF. I feel like there's some large, dark, kind of angulated glimpse up in the epi. Look at that little crinkly, wrinkly. I mean, that's cerebriform, right? Now, I always joke, I, I promise you I can find just cerebriform cell in pretty much any biopsy if you give me enough time. But I mean, honestly, that really looks cerebriform. And there's also a lot of tagging, right? We have a lot of lymphocytes along the basal layer here. I mean, very concerning because they've got little halos around them. They're tagging along at the epidermis. And in this, in this area here, we don't really see any interface or much spongiosis. So we've got too many lymphocytes for too little sponge. So that always makes us think of mycosis fungoides. But let me go back to low power again. Where do you think we are in the body? What are these? Glands. Apocrine glands. Yeah, apocrine glands, right? They've got that abundant granular orange, I'm sorry, pink um, pink cytoplasm with these little, uh, little refractile um, bodies up here. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they're usually there. And then the nuclei are really big and round and have like a, a prominent nucleolus. They look like a little eyeball staring at you. Someone on Instagram once said they look like minions, like the little one-eyed minion uh, from the, the Minions movie. And I was like, oh, it's so true, they do. So I like that. So apocrine glands, so where, so there's that. And then oh, what do we see in the dermis? Little smooth breast muscle bundles, lots of them. Breast could be, the breast area. will have a smooth muscle and sometimes can have like apocrine glands. Or groin area. And, and the genital area, exactly. So in this case, we're actually in the vulva, okay? In the nipple, usually the muscle bundles are thicker and bigger, and in the vulva or scrotum, they usually are really small, but admittedly, that is a somewhat subjective uh, thing, but just, just to know. And also, I feel like usually apocrine glands are more abundant in the genitals, and whereas you, you can rarely see them around the nipple areola, but um, so they can be in both places. But um, yeah, this ended up being from the vulva, I believe. Like, like and what about this? over here. Yes, we've got atrophic epidermis, a band of homogenized eosinophilic, almost pale. So you can see that it's uh, the collagen here. You can see the fibers when we flip the condenser, but it's, it's kind of pale sclerotic. So sometimes that happens in lichen sclerosis. You get this band of sclerotic collagen, and sometimes it can get edema in there that makes it look really, really pale, almost white. And then below it, you've got a band of histiocytes that are kind of trickling between the collagen. You sometimes get this kind of, it almost looks a little like interstitial GA. So we, um, we wrote a paper about that a couple years ago. Sarah Shalin and I and our colleagues, we wrote um, a paper about this kind of interstitial granulomatous pattern. This interstitial pattern that looks like interstitial GA that you see down under the sclerotic band in lichen sclerosis. You tend to see that more often in extragenital um, uh, like in sclerosis than in genital, but you can see it in both. And then sometimes there'll also be a band of lymphocytes in here too, but you can have either lymphocytes or this kind of interstitial histiocytes um, or both, okay? So in this case, this was clinically like in sclerosis and did not fit for mycosis fungoides. So this is an example of one of the mimics of mycosis fungoides that in like in sclerosis, you can have really prominent epidermotropism of lymphocytes that really mimic, strongly mimic um, mycosis fungoides cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Pretty scary. So this is another rem reminder of why we don't make the diagnosis of mycosis fungoides on PATH alone in isolation. It's got to fit clinically because there are a variety of entities that can have um, what looks like tagging of lymphocytes in the epidermis or epidermotropism and yet is not mycosis fungoides. So this is lichen sclerosis mimicking with a kind of pseudo MF appearance. And you can see that there's a whole long list in, in the Dermapath textbooks of things that can do that, but you can see it sometimes lichenoid keratoses um, can have a prominent area, areas that look like MF. You can sometimes see it overlying pigmented purpura and a variety of other things too. But this one is pretty scary because not only does it have all the tagging with the halos around the lymphs, but it's also got the little cerebriform crinkly looking nuclei. Pretty scary, huh? So lichen sclerosis.
And here's kind of, this is, it would be harder when you have this, right? Because here you can't really see that homogenized collagen very well. You're beginning to see it right here, but in the earlier kind of inflammatory phase of lichen sclerosis, as it's just starting out, it starts as kind of usually as an interface dermatitis. This case is a little strange because it's got all these lymphs in the epidermis, but not really much in the way of vacuolar change or dying keratin sites like you'd normally expect. So kind of weird. I mean, it is very, you could easily take a picture of that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to slide a little sticky on the back. And of course, there's a wrinkle right where I wanted to show you, but that's okay. I mean, you could take a picture of some of those cells and put that in a book and say, this is classic mycosis fungoides, right? Scary. All right. So low power and clinical wins the day. Lichen sclerosus, metatrophicus, if you like.